This is the Bar Stewards Enquiry. You are talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. In, in what way? You are an underachiever in life. You were, I saved your bacon one time. You were gone. You had to that well. I couldn't save you. I, I said, oh, no, but you said the right thing. But well, that's why you don't know anything about racing, John. I, I didn't say I do. Right? I'm saying that... What, what have you contributed to racing? You are one of these take-out merchants. Take out all you can. Hello and welcome. Yes, it's the last year's Inquiry Champions Day preview. And I think it's about time that we delivered. We wouldn't need to be personal tomorrow. Me, John, Nick and Jack. Good evening, chaps. Good evening, all. Hello, everyone. Hello, John. So, obviously, I don't think we've done the biz since York, have we, on these pods? Probably not. I think York's stretching it a bit. No, I'm joking. We did all right there, didn't we? Yeah, it just feels like that. It feels like the last few pods that we've we've just not took off. So we're on naughty step here, and it's time to deliver. And I'm hopeful that we can do. Hopefully, we've all done the work, which I'm sure we will have. You can get on the way to some winners this weekend and hopefully pay for it for a miserable flat season. The 120 kicks us off. It's obviously the whole card sponsored by Quipco. It's the British Champions Long Distance Cup. John, you love these races. Well, at least it's not the usual boring bastards, you know. <laughs> I mean, they've got Kipley off and Trawl on it, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Principles from the Gold Cup. Bellocci are sneaking in there after his Bassail handicap win at Royal really Ascot. I don't know what Willie's playing that there, but at least it livens it up, doesn't it? For sure. Kiprioth has proved himself to be potentially one of the all-time greats this season. It's flawless. Most of the time he looks unbeatable. Jack, is there any difference that you could see tomorrow that Kiprioth won't do the business? Not really, if I'm honest. I think I think four to five in a couple of places is, is probably quite fair. I mean, it wouldn't wouldn't be my kind of bet, particularly the sort of confidence I'm in it with these few of these shorties at the minute. But he got beat by a very enterprising ride from from Frankie last year, and I just can't see Ryan getting fooled by that again. Um, obviously, Buick up on on Trollman this time. I mean, you could argue it is the one horse that has beat him, and in, you know, across this kind of almost unbeaten sort of couple of years he's had in these ranks. Um, the Clover horse is 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 a a nice as as John was saying. You know, it's nice to have something different in there, and and that was really impressive last time out at Newmarket. But thought it had the race run to suit, and it's it's still got a good you know seven or eight pounds to find with with an on song Kiprios. And you know, I know he had his injury troubles, but he's looked pretty pretty untouchable this year, and and I wouldn't be in a rush to take him on. I think there's better betting opportunities on the card personally. Mm, okay. I'm going to swing it back to you, John, before I go to Nick. Mm-hmm. So where are you sat with the prices? I know that you're not really a four to five man for very much, really, unless you think it's an absolute stick-on job. Yeah. Where are you on this race? It's the sort of race I can happily sit there and watch. If I had to have a bet, somebody put a gun to my head, I'd probably look for trial and meant to try and kick off an each way lucky 15 or something. But in all honesty, I can't see any situation where they'll be betting on this. Yeah. Do we give a bit of respect to, to Al Nair? Because, obviously, the, of the last four runs, it did bomb out at Longchamp back in May. But then, before that, it was second to Tower of London, beating Trollerman into third by a length and a half. Since then, ran second to Vauban at York and would have beat it in another stride, uh, obviously, on quicker ground. And then absolutely shit up last time out at HQ. So I know this is like a different test, but I suppose it's like we said at the start of this race preview, didn't we? It's somewhat different, but certainly adds a bit of spice to the race. Like, sweet William is a right bastard. And he, to be honest, he's one of them, though. I could actually see running quite well. Didn't he run in this last year and run Third, quite yeah. well in? Yeah, ran, ran quite well in this. But then you've got to say that he would beat 13 lengths in this last year. So, but look, it's one of them that sweet William, he, he'd run along with anything and then just come to it basically. So, Nick, where are you on this for opener? I probably just swing to a Kiprios A near forecast just for the reason that I think Trollman will be taken on. You, you're afraid he's in there as a spoiler. Hmm. He'll, he'll either go on from Trollman or if Trollman wants to go fast enough, he'll go with him. He won't let him have a rest. I'd go with the Kiprios A near straight forecast, really. That's my play in the race. That's my... Because, yeah, A and A is the improvement. Trollman's done it before, but 
I think he gets spoiled by the Euphrates. Could also be, much to John's disgust, that Tom Clover might have just improved Al <laughs> Al Nair somehow. It's his seventh trainer, that Al Nair. Unlikely. <laughs> Unlikely, says John. Obviously, chaps, we're on the inner turf course due to Ascot being predictably heavy at this time of year. Now, we've raced twice on the inner course for the round track races in the past. It was in 2023 last year when Trollerman did get that Frankie de Tori pinching ride from Kiprios. And the last time was 2019 where Aidan won it with Kew Gardens. What's the track like? Where are you sat in terms of draws and things on the round course? Hard to dig through the numbers and, and, it, and it, feels, it feels like it's less of a disadvantage to be or, or possibly more advantageous to be coming coming from wide. It's, it's less difficult to get a decent early posse. And I don't know if it's just recency, recency bias from me last year, but and the combo of the ground being somewhat similar, but it, it felt like you wanted to be a little bit more up with the pace than you'd notoriously kind of, um, you know, think with, with Ascot. I think it's, it's, it's quite difficult to get, you know, get in from, from, uh, from being dropped right out. Mm. John, them two years, 2019, 2023, do you get a feel for the inner track there? So the claim I've got for the track is that it's sharp. <laughs> it is, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I, th- I think... Really, the biggest thing, you you want a well-balanced traveller, irrespective of the draw. I think if you've got a well-balanced traveller, you can put it anywhere, anywhere. Yeah. But you wouldn't want the great raking stride that's maybe going to get away from the jockey a bit or something like that, you know? It's interesting because uh, the reading was about 6.8 there, which wasn't too bad. And if we get a, we've had a drying day today in Berkshire. It's, it's overcast tomorrow. It all depends what kind of drizzle you get. You see, I, I think it's a big question what, what ground we end up. Saturday morning, at the last check-in, we're due to get quite a fair bit, I think. Mm, I think um, that's the concern. They wouldn't have done that without Saturday's forecast. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think that's why they've done it, because th- if they get sort of five, six mils Saturday morning, that might just tip it over edge. But So that's where we are where we are in terms of Ascot's choice to do that. Just before we go on to the next, where do we stand with this calendar where we're finishing with Champions Day at Ascot on all these notoriously Rabbit. heavy ground? Mm. Is it time for a rethink? Massively they, over you. Yeah, they won't though. They wanted this at Ascot and Ascot's the main track and everything's going away. I mean, you had a perfectly good, it used to be called the Festival of Racing. The QE2 used to be run in yeah, September. September. Yeah. yeah. Perfectly good then, perfectly good grounds. Lovely, wasn't it? Yeah, lovely up there. And now you've got three weeks worth of new market on the trot every Saturday, haven't you, in now October? Yep. You have three weeks on the trot. There's Cambridge is now back in back a week. It's a decent day's racing. There's a very, very competitive race racing, but it's half the time it's run on muck throughout its history. So, you know, it's it doesn't sit that well with me. It's trying to keep harping on about this, but in the era of gross profit tax, it being run on muck, there's no motivation for the BHA to alter that because the harder it is to find winners, the better they're making. The QE2 last year was, was pretty famous, wasn't it, yeah. for being a complete farce in terms of Big Rock going up that far rail and you know and winning by a distance. Might as well run it at Renke. So Yeah, that is a good point. We'll come on to that later on on the straight track races, how we feel the track will possibly ride on Saturday. Obviously, we don't know that yet. And where better way to start talking about that as we come on to the next race, the 155 champion sprint over six furlongs, where... Kinross drops back in trip and heads the market at around the 11 to 2 mark. Nick, I'm going to start off with you here. I've got a feeling, and I'm not certain on this, but I've got a feeling that you're going to play some low draws this week. The stalls are on the far side, which really means you should go low. But you're looking, apart from audience who doesn't really, you've got art power going from 12. You've got swing along going from 13. You've got uh, the Egan Egan Murray one going from 15. All the pace here is high. It's very, very, you know, you've got Anaf doesn't get out from four. You've got Montesib hold up in six. Should have been a ring from one that's held up. 
so everything there suggests that the pace will be higher. Now, where does where do they go? The Twelve, you can get across. This will this will make a lot of jockeys think throughout the day where they go in this race. Probably, I, I wouldn't be against. I wouldn't be against having the first three from last year, or maybe the first four in some exotics because that's where all the pace is to go through the mark power hasn't had soft ground all year kim ross is you know kim kim ross is kim ross he'll, he'll run his race spy catcher six furlongs on easy is his that's his pay and, and swing along last year was drawn one of the worst and ran one of the best races from their fault i might play some exotics here because i can't see any pace in low i'm gonna go slightly against you in terms of i think elite status from Carl Burks. I think they ran in the, the Sprint Cup last time. Swing Along was very eye-catching in that because it was completely on the flank. Elite status was not as towards the disadvantaged Andrea. But I'm prepared to give this horse another chance, Elite status. If it does play out that low is the place to be, this horse does bang out. They won't mess about. And what I find interesting is just Clifford Lee, really. He would have, obviously, the choice to ride that or swing along and he's chosen this and I, I just think that's a tip in itself because obviously he, he thinks that that's where the the best chance is and if we are talking low numbers 20 to one's massive for this it's never done it at, at top level but if you look at its form beating relief rally by two and a half is pretty pretty decent beating lake forest half a length kind of blue in third regional in fourth that's probably group one form Kind of blue was second in the the Vernons, so I think this has been overlooked personally. I think twenty to one for a meeting that Carl Burke definitely targets these days. I think he's pretty big, and that's where I'd be in the sprint taking a chance on that and hoping that the draw is going to play out low. Jack, it's another Carl Burke for me, but it's one Nick mentioned, Spy Catcher, um, who I feel is the most interesting. The way I could see the race playing out, two groups, audience and possibly elite status um, on on the far side, with uh, with Art Power very much down the middle. And if you watch last year's Art Power, whilst he did sort of was drawn low and made most of his running up the rail came across into the middle towards the latter part of the race and that's where everything sort of developed so i don't think being on i, I think they'll they'll leave the near side alone but i don't think being in the middle is is necessarily um a, a disadvantage particularly with him there you know blazing the trail out front and, and for me spy a good third in this last year he's actually hampered I, i'm not sure he'd have finished any higher than third but he might have got an extra couple of lengths or so and i think this is his sort of conditions now city you know he looks he was a bit um, tap for toe at the Curra last time out on good ground. He's he's got very decent form on on ground with some some cut in it, and I think a stiff six is his bag. I don't think he quite gets a, a good seven, but I think a stiff six is is very much his bag. And and obviously ran probably a career best in this last year. He was very good when beating James Delight at uh, Deauville earlier in the season, and I think he's he's drawn in and around the right place to 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 make a bit of a splash. And you know this is a very open race as we, as we've seen with these sprinters all year there's no standout i'd be against kin ross i think this is you know he's not he's not the horse of old while still a very good horse but i still think this this six furlongs um finds him out a, a little bit so at sort of 25 to 1 i thought spy catcher was was the one to be with for me good stuff so so davis is the cast with the four from last year you're always spy catcher at, at about a pony and i'm with elite status at 20s so at least some nice prices anyway we're not tipping the obvious or the semi-obvious at the front end. John, where are you standing? I'm actually alongside Jack with Spy Catcher. Ooh. I sort of feel as though I've got to know this horse the last couple of years. Have you rang him up? <laughs> <laughs> kind of from a, a, a physical aspect, because I felt I spotted when he got him right last year, starting with the run at, I think it was in Newcastle on the year, whether went tap. Will be, and he, he had a little bit of a golden run then. But yeah, so I, I'm happy that I, I know what this horse looks like when he's right, if you know what I mean. And I don't think he's looked right for much of this year. And when I clocked him at the Curra last time out, and I thought, fucking hell, that does look right now. I just get the feeling he's going to come on a little bit from that Curra run. I think you'll 
I'm not saying he'll win, but I think he'll save the best run he's put up all season on Saturday. Good stuff, mate. Right, so we've got two for Spycatcher, which officially really is a klaxon. We've got to say that's the, the more dominant selection out of, out of all four of us, what we're saying. So Spycatcher... The thing I think you should say, Lee, is that this could have a bearing on the rest of the meet in this race. If they do go all up low, then watch the mile race last year. Once that happened, Art, Art Powell won from once. Big Rock went right up the rail. And then you had the Balmoral where uh, the gatekeeper went right up the rail again. This this will determine where they go in a lot of ways. What we're saying to listeners, as well as probably ourselves, watch the result of this. If there is a pronounced bias, take big action in the QE2, but more preferably the Balmoral. Hmm. Yeah. In terms of, of your bets, get on straight away. If you're taking set prices for forecasts, say for example, with your bookies, and you're able to do that, then do that. Because like Nick says, it'll be a lot, lot shorter come post time if there is a particular side that looks like well ahead. It's tough punting Saturday, we have to concede, but at least we've tipped prices there. We move on to the 235, which is, of course, the champions, Phillies and Mares. Cal Parda heads the market at 9-4 to four for Mr. Baldin and Judmont. Then it's Content, 7s, Tiffany, 15-2. to two. A very competitive affair, this. I'll kick us off. I'm going with a filly that I think has got a lot of potential still to give, and she is at a very nice price. 20-1 to one is available for Samaya trained by Dermot Weld, and I really believe this filly has hit nowhere near her top number as of yet. She made a reappearance at Cork, behind Thunder Roll, should have beat it half the track, just got stopped for a run numerous times on the soft ground. She then took on the boys against Candleford, ran perfectly well, but just that stage of the development wasn't going to defeat Candleford. Very impressive when beating Trevornance at Cork in a Group 3. And last time out, she could not win on the sectionals. She was caught quite far back, about fifth or sixth place. They didn't go a particularly hard gallop. And she was quite strong through the line. And I just think this softer ground, if they just decide from stall four, just to ride that little bit handier, I'm a bit fed up that they keep dropping her out. It's frustrating because I don't think she needs dropping her I don't think they're going to do that certainly because they're sticking paces on. Mm. Exactly. I think they're more or less saying now that it's time to roll. And the reason you gain 20s is because of official ratings. 103 versus the market leaders, which are 113, 115. I'm not paying much attention to that, especially with Phillies. It doesn't bother me that. It's just a case of, what turns up on the day? And I think if this is written correctly, you will get a career best out of Samaya. And if that's the case, we're at least hitting the boards, I think, in terms of a place. So 20 to 1, I think, is absolute mustard for me in this job. There's not much I can add to that. Okay. Other than say, I'm back in the moral Yorkshire Oaks win. <laughs> you said that, didn't you? Of course. I'm making a case for it winning the Yorkshire Oaks. I've got a fancy here at 20, is not yeah, it's a great bet. If she doesn't produce a career best Saturday, I'll be I'll be quite surprised. As long as she's ridden right, I don't want to drop side at back at Telly. That'll be I'll be moaning and groaning after a furlong if that's the case. But if they sit sort of relatively handy and travel with her, don't know why they drop her out because she doesn't pull, she don't reef. She's not right. like, but they keep dropping her out all the time. Yeah, no pieces are going on, and they're blaming her. <laughs> it's right, isn't it? Put, put the pieces on Chris Hayes instead. Absolutely, Chris is an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where me and John are. So a second klaxon. So we've got a klaxon at 25 in the sprint with Spycatcher and a klaxon with Samaya at 20s. Jack. Well, it's a kind of 2.5 klaxon for me because I'm having two bets in here. Um, Samir is one of them. I won't I won't bore you all with the third case for her. But I think that the point, main point I'd like to make in this race is that it's, you know, you're, you're absolutely right about ratings, Lee. 115 versus the field. <laughs> this is not, there's no elite filly in here. I'll go as far as saying I think Kalpan is the worst fav on this card. Um, she's drifted yeah. a bit from, from where she was, but even nine to four. Very short, unproven on the ground. 
won a pretty falsely run contest last time out in the September stakes, you know, beating, beating Lions Pride, God's Window. They're not elite horses. Hamish didn't turn up whatsoever. I think she's a nice filly in the making. You probably make her fav on that performance, but she's, she's, she's right for taking on, in my opinion. Three-year-olds have had the, the ruled the roost in this race. I mean, they've won eight of the last 10. I don't know if that's just variance or, or what may have you, but it is a three-year-old that I like alongside Samia. And it's uh, the old Aidan O'Brien second string system, uh, wingspan. Tracked this filly for quite some time, and I thought I, I, I really liked her appearance uh, when winning at Gowran Park in August. Looks a really uncomplicated filly, goes forward and, and will do from this draw. And I like that performance last time out in the Blandford. She was she, she pretty much nearly, you know, Ryan nearly nicked it off the front. Um, and I assumed they'd gone really quickly and, you know, she'd, she'd been called up, etc. But they were 106% finishing speed that day. So I'm not actually concerned about the step up in trip. I think there was plenty of running left in her. One little intricacy about this race is that on the inner track, it's actually uh, one mile, three and a half. So it's a, it's a half furlong less than it would be on the, the regular course. So a little bit less of a stamina test. And, you know, this filly's only had six races in her life or, or sorry, yeah, five races, actually, my mistake. Um, there's more to come from her she looks a typical improver at the right sort of time and at a price of 20s 22 to 1 in a couple of places you know look at this race in in the past it's been won by some some real rank horses poptronic last year is sharder at a big price a couple of years ago it's not the one that you want your banker in for sure and and i think you know having a swing at a couple like samir and wingspan you could you could do a lot worse so uh yeah it'll be a split on on those two for me Good stuff, mate. Can't knock any of that, what you've just said, in terms of, of cases. I think we're all of the opinion that these Phillies races, when we see 85-rated Phillies beating 105-rated ones, when they're having a pop shot of some black type, you can tell the, that ratings with Phillies mean far less at times than what they do with the with the Colts. So, Nick, is this a no? <laughs> this is a definite no. I don't think I've ever had a bet in this race. Oh, you've, done, you've done better than everyone that has had a bet in it then <laughs> I've never had a bet in this race in its history Yeah, so when, I'll leave that to the people who, who, who follow these events when Poptronic won oh. last year from Blue Stocking everyone and his mother were on Blue Stocking and no one were on Poptronic and Sam James managed PHA was elated yeah, I think I backed no. Blue Stocking twice last year, got beat by Al Kareem and Poptronic, and she's since gone on won the fucking arc. So that says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Jack, I'm saying, I, that Chester run yeah. where <laughs> got beat by Al Kareem at Chester, and like you said, she's just won an arc. You just can't make this game up at times. Put you in a straight jacket. So, so far then, uh, we're doing pretty well on prices. I like this. Some of our listeners will like this. They love a price especially if we get it right. We move on to the 315, which is, of course, the Queen Elizabeth II, one of the better royals that we've had. We've not got, not got many good ones now. Uh, George III was good. He was mad, wasn't he? <laughs> I love yeah. that. George III was good. He was mad. <laughs> but yeah, I like that. 315, then. That it kicks off. Sharon, 6-4. to four, You can get Sharon at the moment. John, I'm going to come to you first. What you think to this market? I think Sharon's just the best out. But would I want to take six to four? Of course not. Factor Cheval at nine to one off a low drawer. Coming here fresh after a reasonable run at Goodwood. Has run here well in the past. Last year he chased Big Rock home after the jockey pissed him about quite a bit. I don't see what there is not to like at nine to one as an each way puff. I think this is a very thin race, to be honest. I think there's only about two or three can win this. I agree. I'm going to come to Jack now with regards to Biltong, Team Biltong. <laughs> Obviously, the lad that owns, I think I think it's a it's a great story. Dylan Cooney's head lad that owns it. He took a pot shot at 10K at the sales. And what a story it is that, well, you know what ITV are going to do. It's a story. He's now rated 117, which I think flatters him quite substantially. I'll be honest, he's not an 117 horse. I, I think it was quite a risky supplement, to say the least. £70,000 of this lad's hard-earned money. Obviously, that's all his prize money winning has gone after training for this season. And he's got to finish... Savings, pension. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. He's got to finish third for him to make any money. Fourth wouldn't be too bad. 
fifth and sixth would be pretty disastrous. So, Jack, I'm coming to you first. Yeah. As a, you've got horses with Dylan. Mm. And what do you think to Prague? Look, it's a very much a story, isn't it? Ed, will, Ed and Co. will have a field day on, on Saturday with that one. Amadeo, who owns is a, is a great chap. I've, I've been in his company a few times. And he loves this game, as uh, Johnny Murtar would say. So I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd wish for nothing better than for things to go well on Saturday. But with my kind of... Um, with my form book hat on, I, I just can't see it, and he's he's not been helped by being drawn in thirteen. If we're if we're going by the low, the low draw theory, so um, wish them all the best, but but I'm against on on this occasion. And yeah, I think I think you know Charon's certainly the right favourite, but I will just make a point that the two times he has been beaten this season, audience in the um, lock inch, and then by tribalist last time out in the Mulan. And that was when horse, uh, you know, a couple of horses stole a bit of an easy on the front end. And we saw last year that that happened here with Big Rock. And I think there's one in here who could do that. And I think it might be Henry Longfellow from five. Um, bit of a disappointing year for this horse. I mean, he, he won the national stakes last year and, and looked like he'd be, you know, potentially a, a pretty top grade miler. He's not disgraced himself at all. Um, you know, he's beaten a net by Rosalian here on the round course when, again, nearly, nearly sort of stole that race. And, you know, He's crying out for a step up to 10, but I'm just thinking, is Aiden thinking, you know what, I, I could maybe uh, steal a march here and, and nick one. And obviously you've got the right man on board to do that. Um, he hasn't actually really had much give in the ground. And I think that's quite important to him. If you look at his runs as a two-year-old, he's been racing on, with the exception of, of Longchamp last time out, pretty quick ground all summer. I think he might just be a little bit overlooked at sort of 8, 10 to 1. Um, not the sort of price that you'd often get with a, an O'Brien first string in a race like this when he's always got so many options and I could just see it playing out that Ryan steals a bit of a march and and Charon might might be closing for for second so maybe one of Davis's uh, forecasts of of sort of reverse forecast those two because I think he's probably the one who I'd most fancy to beat Charon if if there is one at all so yeah I'll I'll be having a small bet on on Henry Longfellow myself. The next second to to Rosalian is Mm. Metropolitan's like three lengths further back in third, and Metropolitan's the same price, unless they're saying that Metropolitan wants massive slop, which it might. But that beat Dancing Gemini half a length, of course, at Longchamp earlier this year in the French Guineas. So I agree with you. I think like around double figures, this is about, they've kept him fresh for this. He's come here fresh. He's going to have to do better than he has done recently, but there just might be a case for him doing so. And like you said, with the draws, we've got which we have to keep an eye on. Stall five might be sort of advantageous if they stayed over that far side. Just one at a price that is really out of the box, just for people to play maybe in some kind of place, pots, exotics, whatever, would be Serona of the Frenchman. She'll absolutely love the ground. And I know a lot of people say I can't have that level of form, but how many times? Wouldn't it be fantastic if it won, though, for the killed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kill yeah, that. yeah, exactly that. And let's just say he's getting to the bottom of it now in terms of what, what she wants and needs. Now, she's got to improve probably, you'd say, a good, what, £12 mm. of what she's done so far. However, the time at Newmarket was a fairly decent one. So I, I just wouldn't discount her, the mood she's in. It. One of them, that the end of season races like this, you're going to get plenty that run below form. And I just think she's probably hitting the notes at the moment and probably could run a big race at a bullseye plus, that kind of thing. That's the one that interested in me, the second string of the Frenchman. He won't be bothered what, what wins if he gets the winner. Nick, where do you stand? First of all, I think it's one of the worst QE2s I've seen. Yep. He's done well this year. I'm not having Sharon as a top miner. I'm really not. I think he's been very, very consistent. He's improved the thing. But if you look at here, he's won the Queen the Queen Anne. He's been Docklands. Docklands three and I think. I don't think anything else run it ran its race on Good the Firm there. For me, I'm gonna play a couple of forecasts. Factor Cheval, Henry Longfellow, Metropolitan. I I'm probably being a bit Ignorant and a bit sort of biased here, but I want to get him. I, I, I can't have him as a top, a top miler. Yeah, he was beaten the last time, and he's been on the go a long time this season. Now he's been on the go since March. He's had six races. He had a fifty, fifty days break in there, but it could be one of these things. Do you trust Variant to keep him going all year? 
If he keeps going tomorrow, I'll throw my hands up and say fine. But he's been beaten by audience. He's beaten this this year. He's beaten Astro Bow three lengths, Poker Face a length and a half. Been beaten by audience. Beaten Docklands two and a half lengths. Doville one I'm giving, and then then he was beaten by Tribalist. I don't think that stacks up as a classy miler. I mean, again, cr- crude form lines. It beats Metropolitan three lengths at, at Deauville. What was that, the race? Jack Lamawa. And yeah. then Henry Longfellow beat Metropolitan three lengths at St. James's Palace. Metropolitan could be, could be one of these soft ground French horses at the end of the season. You could know, be. You know, you just, you could, you just could be. But I, I'm just, I'm sticking by this bigger payoff. I don't think it's, I, I think it's a really, really poor quality Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. No, and we did say it one at worst Queen Anne's we'd ever seen as well earlier on in the yeah. day on one of the shows. So we've got to back up what we're saying, even though it's a horse that's six to four and will probably be well fancied and well touted by blogger followers. We're going with Emery Longfellow and I think Factor Cheval in terms of how we're going to strategize the race there. But again, keep your eye on the draw. 355, the big one, the champion stakes, of course, won by King of Steel from Trap 1 last season. If you are a Patreon member listening to this, and of course, first tonight you will be, of course, Killen Dagen was recommended in my column at 3-1, to one, anti-post. Now, 13 away. The reason being, as most people know, I'm a Time Lord. If you take the sectionals literally, which I don't always, and I, I don't in this case, because I don't think he's a better horse than City of Troy. But if you take the sectionals literally... He comes out four pounds higher than City of Troy. But that doesn't matter, does it? The fact that we're mentioning City of Troy and a horse that and is on the numbers as recorded possibly better, this horse, I think, deserves his place at the top of the market. I thought he should be. He should be favourite to beat Economics on that alone because Economics won the Irish champion. JRB's good form as well. He was impressive at Dover when he did that. But he didn't beat Ghost Writer any further than what Callan Dagan did at York in the International. John? I'll be very surprised if Economics beats Callan Dagan. Um, I thought he had hard enough race in Ireland. He's had 35 days off. Callan Dagan's had two months off since York. Again, you caught the sectionals. I would be very, very surprised if Economics can beat him. I think if Callan Dagan runs his race, he wins. For those who feel like they must have a bet, because if they miss the three to one, I wouldn't be breaking my neck to take 13 to eight. No. I'd maybe considering each way pork on Irisine, the other French raider. Obviously, gets the trip really well. There's a 12 furlong, with multiple group with over 12 furlongs, handles the conditions, should get a positive ride. And on the ratings, really, he's got as good a chance as anything outside the top two. So I think 14 to 1 is very fair about that one as an each way poke. You'll probably get far places on this race anyway with some of the both. Yeah, good shout. And you can see weaknesses in the likes of economics. I think we all said that that was a brutal race at Leopardstown. They were all out there, absolutely all out. The, 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 the... No, it's not so, yeah, he's bled. He did, obviously, at York when he won. The Dante so impressively, that's when he had his little bleed. It's one of them, it's in back of your mind all the time. I know he's won twice since, and people say, well, I'm not bothered about that now. But at the end of the day, like John says, I think 59 days for Callan Dagen's good. Los Angeles coming out 13 days after the arc, after a very busy season. That's That would be a concern, a huge concern, really. That's never a plan, is it, to run in the arc and then come here. It's It's just not. Not, not to make the running in the air, mm. can finish on the stretcher. Yeah. And then, yeah. I th- yeah, I think we summed that race up quite well so far, me and John. But do Jack and Nick have differing views, Jack? Yeah, I'm, I'm quite usually contrary as a person, but not so much here. I think you guys have summed it up spot on. I think my main takeaways are... The market's corrected itself now. It did have economics in favour earlier in the week, and I thought that was wrong. If you use the sectional analysis that you mentioned, Lee, but also from a form perspective, economics was impressive when he won the champion stake. He had, you know, all kind of traffic and uh, people trying to take him out to contend with. But but that form hasn't hasn't worked out overly well. If you take the the Jap in third, who ran a poor race in the arc, Los Angeles, of, of course, who's who's ran, you know, respectably. But, you know, that that's that form with City of Troy. I mean, I was massive on 
Michael Landigan that day. And he, and he quite simply just ran into one. You know, he's ran a career best there. He's absolutely thumped Blue Stocking. He's gone on to win the arc. You know, that, that form for me ranks better than the Irish champion in the context of this. I think he is a, a better horse on quicker ground. You know, he did have those conditions at York and that might have accentuated the, the time a little bit. But he, he's perfectly comfortable on this ground. He's won on it in France. So he'd be the right favourite. But as John said, 13 to 8 wouldn't interest me. And yeah, Irisine is, is actually the only bet I've had in the race earlier in the week. So I can I can totally get that. A nice horse, this, and he loves soft ground conditions. He's, he's won, yeah, as John said, many a group race in France. They actually were contemplating coming here last year. And I think he'd have been a, a real strong favourite for that contest. But they weirdly went to the... Uh, the Japan Cup on on rapid ground, which I can't it's probably one of the worst piece of race planning I've ever seen. To be honest, that would have never suited. So I'm glad they're here. The horse is in good form. He's uncomplicated. He'll get a decent ride, and I'd much favour him to hit the frame than Los Angeles, who's half his price. And and as you say, I can't remember the stat off the top of my head, but if I remember rightly, runners at the Arc meeting at this meeting of, a, of an awful record. Um, off the top of my head so so yeah I think you know maybe something like exotic with with Callan Dagen and Irisine and throw economics in there to come third perhaps. So just to point out as well that Callan Dagen's upgrade figure takes him to 127 time figure for York which as I say you don't have to believe it because sometimes I don't I doubt the time sometimes but 127 is the year's best time the, there's nothing that's beat that so the time lords will be, well, that's what they do, isn't it? Anyway, Nick, you can sort this race out now yourself. What do you think? Right, I think the best bet here is to is the market. If you've got a Denise or uh, you've got a Hills account, the market without calendar and, and economics. And it's interesting here because this also is going to get the is ground for the first time oh, since about May. Uh, Los Angeles has been stuck in there at 11 to 8, 6 to 4. Royal Rhyme, who's less than two lengths behind him on ground that wouldn't be anywhere near as 16 to 1 and 12 to 1. Uh, he's been running well all, all year on ground that's not his, not his cup of tea. And finally, he could get soft ground here. I think each way with uh, Denise at 16 to 1, without the big two in there, I think you'll get a very good run for your money. So. That's my, my, that's my I, I think Clandigan will win the race, by the way. But that, but if you want a, a sixteen to one poke in in a market, as you know, I don't go for the the, the shorties. Uh, if you want a, a, a working man's price, with the wet Clandigan economics, if you've got Denise sixteen to one, if you've got William Hills twelve to one, it can't be five to four and twelve to one for me on this ground between Los Angeles, especially after a long shot. No, and after what we've just said, that that could be a belting bet if you've got those accounts. Cheers for that, Nick. That's something to take on board if you do have those accounts. Certainly, it looks a, a big value, like Nick says. That definitely wants cutting the ground, gets it, and could run big. So, without the big two, of course. 435 to finish. Last but not least, the Balmoral. A race Nick likes. Nick likes to, to, to find the winner of this, etc., so I'll save Nick to last on this. But again, I think, I think, gentlemen, we are battling against where the best place to be is. We don't know. We're guessing whether it's low or high. We think low, but we're not certain. What time do reserves coming? Is this Kirat Reserve 1? Is, what, is, that, is that tomorrow afternoon? You've got three reserves. Midday Friday. You've got a 7-1 to one shot and he's Reserve 1. You don't know if he's going to run yet. Yeah, it's not yeah. a good situation. And, and from memory, there's no hard and fast rule on rule fours. Some might apply, some might not, which is very cheeky, really, when, when this might not get a run. I backed Queer out last time against Volterra, so I, I could see that running really well. Again, draw, we, we don't know. So we, we, we're sort of guessing. Carry the one was sort of on my list as well. But the one that, that stands out for me, if high numbers are okay... What about Sichero's gift at 20? As we know, this is an absolute slot beast. It beat Docklands a length and a half in the, the Wolves Maiden. It beat Holloway Boy. It's £2 better off for beating Holloway Boy back at Sandown after a 382-day absence. Since then, good to firm, good. And then, obviously, I know it disappointed at Longchamp last time in a Group 2, but I don't think 
the race suited him. I, I think it was a slowly run race. Might be a bit of an afterthought, but I like the booking of Billy Loughnane, Billy the Kid, but it's Charles Hill's job. You can't have Charles Hill's after me. He does well if he makes it as far as me, yeah, would you think? <laughs> <laughs> What's your take, mate, on this? I'm actually a little bit keen on the one Billy Loughnane's got off to ride Cicero's gift. Go on. Popmaster. Yeah. He normally rides for Bellman, doesn't he? This one had Yoshua Farm last year. Like soft ground, hasn't had his ground that often this year. Will be ridden just off the pace, which I think could be crucial here because I, I can't have any very much pace on right away across the track. I think any that there is is middle to low. I think this will just have a good track posse and of the ones that will handle the conditions, I think he'll be best placed to, to capitalise on it. He's not a strong rep, but I would have been really strong on Carry the one if I'd been well paced on, but he's a sort of arse. If he's so me unsensible and sits him like halfway in the bunch, yes. But if, if he spences him, you can just forget it, I think. Mm, okay. Carl Burke told a good friend of mine this week that he thinks Thunder Run is absolutely chucked in off 100. So obviously he will know that that works much better than 100, Mm. and they went for Ryan Moore, none of this Clifford Lee nonsense. That's 15 or 2, but again, 21, you have to work it out on the day, but I'm just passing this on for listeners, that Carl Burke himself says, this is chucked in off 100. Jack? Yeah, well, I think that's good info, isn't it, Lee? Because as you say, and and as Nick said, if we watch the sprint and suddenly high draws are fine, then you've got a ready-made bet and you can slam into thunder run with with no concerns but but if it is looking like low is the place to be um i think the one to be with from my side is the botty horse days of our lives really like the run last time out at doncaster over the 10 beat obviously the cambridgeshire winner in liberty lane really good strong on the clock that day as well question mark with him around ground he's not been tried on probably what he's going to contend with particularly if there's a lot of rain on saturday but he's got some soft ground form as a juvenile but i just think he's a rock solid pick and he's in my mind he's, he's certainly a few pounds ahead of his mark and, and 101 is pretty lenient on that last effort so he was one and the other i think i'm going to give one more chance to is el najam of the shirt obviously really fancied this for the clipper didn't really run his race that day, but he did have that awful draw to contend with. So I'm willing to forgive that. Much more like himself in listed company last time out when only beating a, a couple of lengths at Sandown, some nice horses in front. Shirt thought this was potentially a champion stakes horse at one point. He entered it in that in the summer. So, you know, I don't like to second guess the shirt. I try to all season, of course, my anti-post betting, but uh, <laughs> he's here and uh, as long as he goes in the stalls, the pieces are on. He's obviously got a stone rose in there. Yeah, (laughs) probably. At least you get your money back this time, though, John. But, you know, he he was impressive here in the summer, albeit over the the mile, sorry. Um, I think he'll be fine on the ground. And, yeah, I think, you know, at one point I thought this was a group horse, so I'm willing to forgive that bad run and and say that off 104 there's still some juice to be had there. So, yeah, El Najim and Days of Our Lives for me is a, a bit of a split. Yeah, I get the cases for both there. We've been massive El Najim fans, for sure. Like John's pop master, a bit high, maybe, Mark, John, 104. Kind of preferred £10 off, obviously, but <laughs> I still think he's done that, right? Yeah, I thought Bo Pedro ran very well yeah. in the Cambridgeshire and then ran perfectly well behind Volterra last time as well. So I've mentioned that a little bit. But coming on to, to you, Nick, to tee you up like Rory mm. McElroy, 375 yards off the tee on the par five. Mr. Professor, the Lincoln winner, turns up here, just five pound higher, and has run on fast ground twice since, and now gets his ground with Ginger Dave on at 25s. What do you think? The trouble is, I mean, John's right, there is absolutely no pace. And I'll tell you what can happen. Ryan could get out, nick two lengths, and decide where he wants to go. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There is that lack of pace in there. There's a few that can pull hard. If Ryan goes over the far rail, it could be carnage. There's no pace at all. Loads of these are held up. Pop Master will pull too hard over this trip, will he, John? It's possible. Yeah, it's a concern. 25 hours will take the ran a really good race as well uh, uh, behind Volterra. He was drawn 18. He was right on the wrong part of the track. You know, Volterra, well, we thought it could be high. The, the stalls were 
on the stand side. We've been mainly raped by the draw. I mean, the Air Gold Cup, uh, the Cambridgeshire, yeah, we've been a bit of kicking by there. I watch, I, I, I say people, watch where they go. Mr. Professor, yes, I, I can see that running a good race. If the middle of the course is all right, I can see Ryan leading them over there and I will back him and Mursky in a reverse forecast. I think the most the horse will run his race is Bo Pedro, but there's going to be an awful lot of traffic. If Ryan just gets out and decides to go to the far rail, they let him. There's going to be so much trouble in running. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. I can't be more definitive because I don't know what's going to happen. A, well, are we going to get the low amount of rain, which means it will dry up, or are we going to get muck? If it's muck, if it's really, really muck, I'm going to back Mr. Professor. This is the hardest mile handling camp I've looked at all season. Yeah. Because I just don't know what's going to happen. No, it's a fair comment. The strategy for listeners that don't want to get involved early or particularly with lucky or multi bets, it's probably just wait and see on the day and be fastest finger first with your books. Have your bets ready in terms of what you want to do on what particular side might be favoured or not be favoured and then play it from there. But as a podcast to finish the show, we, of course, do have to come up with a bet. And I'm proposing an each way lucky 15 at this stage with the pot shots that we've taken. We've tried to analyse the race the best we can. What's the first one to go in the each way lucky? Well, would it have to be... Spy catcher. Right, so spy mm, catcher yeah. goes in, in the common... Well, I've called Commonwealth, Jesus. What am I on about? Commonwealth. The champion sprint stakes. <laughs> I know, this is, I'm, I'm still in June. I want to still be in June. I don't want this fucking oh, Cheltenham rubbish exactly. all winter. Fucking hell, they've got all this all winter, all these pre... They, they're starting today. They had fucking Cheltenham preview today. Incredible. We've got some flat business to get done. So there we go. So that's the first one in Spycatcher. Right, so the next one I'm thinking, each way lucky, is Samaya in the yes, fillies yep. and mares. So we're happy with that. So that's two love, love way for each way. Lucky this, lovely. John, I'd have to override John. Can we go Henry Longfellow, John? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you sound pissed off. Like You're going to hit me off. No, 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 I'm, no, I'm not pissed off at all. I think Jack made a solid case. You sound like you're going to hit me over at Edwin Hammer. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> He might do, but not because might, of that. Yeah, it's be for another reason. <laughs> that would make me just for me on the news, mate. It wouldn't be anything to It's Henry Longfellow. We're sticking that in. So we've got 25s, 20s and 10s. Great stuff. Oh. Yes, this is hand-warming. How did I get in for the shorty? I don't know. I think we should do Thunder Run it, Balmoral. I was just going to say that. Let's see if there's something else going on. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, thunder running Balmoral that goes off about five to two. Once Stan Side's all right and Burke's told them. It goes off two to a fair if there were the three of one. Yeah. yeah. Our fucking listeners will have to be a Frankie <laughs> Vittori job, won't it? So there we go. We've got 25s, 20s, 10s, 15 or two. Each way lucky. And we're going to suggest an extra each way single to higher stakes on each one because there's no worse than if we back one winner and rest run shit and you win a bag of nuts. So if you have, say, like a, a 50 pence each way lucky, costing, what, £15, then you've got to be having, like, at least 2 or £3 each way on each bet. Stake about 30 quid on there. And I think you get a lot of fun from that. I, I really do. I think that's a, that's a fun bet. As long as we're not shafted by draws and shit like that, then I think we're, we're in business, chap. So what a good show to do. We've caught with some absolute belters. I think this is where we can repair September and October's disastrous pods where we've not given them. I think this is it. I think we're going to weigh them in. Hope you enjoyed that one. Like me, John, Jack and Nick all did. That's all from us. Bye for now. <laughs>